Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video and to a new project and a new car to the channel. This is a 2016 Sepang Blue Audi S1. And as you can see, it has been involved in a little bit of a knock resulting in it being categorized as a Cat N write-off. I have just bought it from a subscriber of the channel, actually Rebecca, uh, who I'm sure we'll introduce you to as this series evolves because yes, the plan is for me to rebuild this car and for it to then become a new project on the channel. You may have heard me say in some of my recent videos that I want to get more hands-on with things like work to my cars uh, and I didn't necessarily think that it would get to this stage. However, this opportunity came up really last minute and I thought to myself, Do you know what, I have always loved the Audi S1. My first car was an Audi A1, so this is very nostalgic to me and I always wanted to buy an S1. In fact, I have it listed as a save search on my auto trader where I just keep an eye on prices. Um, and so yeah, this kind of came out of nowhere and here we are, the new car to the channel. Of course, it isn't quite roadworthy and that is what this series is gonna be all about, me doing my best to rebuild this car back to its former glory and back on the road before we can then, well, see where the rest of the project goes. Of course, I'm no stranger to modifying cars, so we'll have to see where things take us, but I'm really looking forward to basically seeing what it's like, seeing if I can actually do this myself because I am often mocked for, you know, taking cars somewhere, getting people to do the work for me and not actually having a go myself. Well, that is going to change. I've done some DIY mods on some of the other cars, uh, but now it's time for me to properly do something way out of my comfort zone. Now this was delivered late last night, so this is literally my first time seeing the car in the daylight. A quick thank you and shout out to Casey from At Wheel Recovery. You can find all his details down in the description. A big thank you to him for uh, transporting the car, recovering it down to me at such short notice. In a moment, I will take you around the car to show you basically the damage uh, from first inspection. Uh, it is purely front end damage and only to the near side as well. I'm unsure exactly how the crash happened. Maybe we'll catch up with Rebecca uh, in uh, another video uh, later down the series to see exactly what happened. But yeah, it is purely near side front damage, at least on first inspection. But once we press play on the footage I filmed last night, when the car literally first arrived, seeing it for the first time and actually personally unloading it from the trailer, uh, I will show you something else which arrived yesterday as well, which is sat pride and place on the passenger seat, which is very cool as well. And actually, and it kind of goes hand in hand, as I'll explain in a little bit. Here it is then. <laughs> on the back of this transporter, we have one Audi S1. What do we think? <laughs> this is uh, different for me. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest, but S1. Again, a big thank you to Casey from At Wheel Recovery for uh, transporting the car down to me safely. Uh, despite the car actually uh, being in an incident fairly local down in Southampton, the car was actually strangely kept in a salvage yard up in Newcastle. So it was a bit of a logistical nightmare to get the car down. But again, a big thank you to Casey for doing that for me. Um, but yeah, 2016 Audi S1 Sepang Blue. We have the 17 inch factory gloss gray uh, split five spoke wheels on the car as well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, aside from the front end, it is a pretty clean car. I will show you inside. We have 62,000 miles on the clock. On this one, it's a three door, uh, manual as well, fairly obviously, like all of them are. Yeah, 62,221 miles on it at the moment. I actually have a quarter of a tank of fuel as well, which is very handy. Bose audio system and also uh, some nice factory seats in here as well. But let's hop in because something else arrived yesterday, which is super exciting. So I'm sure some of you do know what is in this little parcel. Now, to be honest, I haven't really addressed the fact and personally thanked any of you um, for, of course, the huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers, purely because it actually happened really not too long ago. And most of the videos that have been up on the channel since then have actually been recorded before that. So a big thank you for 100,000 subscribers. It is 
To be honest, my dream to hit that milestone. I mean, I started this channel on the 1st of August, 2013, when I think I was 13 or 14 at the time. Never did I think that I would hit 100,000. So it's been a long time coming and thank you, thank you, thank you for that, for all the people that have watched my videos, be it one video or all of them since I first started. Thank you, it does genuinely mean the world to me. So I need to unbox this because it'd be rude of me not to really, I'm sure you've seen these before, but I had to, I had to be done. Right, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare doing this inside, but we have some little protective things. And then inside, we of course have the silver YouTube play button to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. How cool is that? Presented Hampshire photo for passing 100,000 subscribers. What a thing, very, very cool. And I suppose, even though I didn't really plan a 100,000 subscriber special, that nearly flew out the window, I suppose this could be it. <laughs> but also in here, we also have a nice little letter from Neil Mohan, the CEO of YouTube, which is really cool. Do you remember your first subscriber, your hundredth, your thousandth? Chances are you do. We're proud to honor you, your impressive uh, milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. Very cool. So again, thank you very much. Genuinely, it has been a long time coming, but yeah, it's really cool to have this. And uh, yeah, on to the next one, I suppose. Stupidly, I now own four cars. Right now, actually only two of them work, one of which is actually only really drivable. You can do the maths and see if you can work out which one is which. Um, but this one, I need to show you about it because I wanna get this on the road because I do actually plan on maybe turning this into the daily. More on that soon. Now this, of course, is gonna be a huge learning curve for me. I've never done anything like this before, uh, but I am, uh, having said that, very excited to bring uh, this whole thing to you. Um, I mean, on first glance, as I will show you in a moment, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously the interior is completely unscathed. No airbags have gone off uh, at all. It is actually quite a nice interior as well, full leather interior uh, and all of that. So yeah, no airbags gone off inside as well and all the seat belts are all okay and functional so none of those need replacing which is good really good um, but of course the damage to the front end uh, is where basically the concentration is going to be i do actually have the front bumper to pick up which i will do later on in this video i'm going to meet up with rebecca she's going to give me the bumper even though it's completely unrepairable apparently i just wanted to see basically um, what it's like because that i believe took uh, the brunt of the impact i do also have some uh, paperwork to pick up service records and things like that and also the spare key because i did buy this car directly from rebecca uh, so i didn't go through copart or any auction site like that it was a private sale uh, straight uh, with her but the damage let's kind of dive in and explore what we're looking at and what we need to repair so first of all we're going to touch on the bonnet you can see i do have it just on the latch at the moment we can see that it is pretty bowed in the middle here so i think there's been some sort of impact like that in fact there is some scratching on the bonnet itself you can see the panel gaps are a little bit uneven as it goes back towards the side of the car towards the door there is also a pretty big dent here on the leading edge of the bonnet i think that is the double skinned section of the bonnet though if we just pop this open we can see under here i think that's the double skin section so that might be tricky to repair however i am going to give it a go see what we can do i am obviously going to need a new bumper so i need to price that up and i'll also price up a new bonnet and a new wing or pre-owned parts uh, of those just to basically gauge the prices because uh, the wing is also uh, a little bit damaged as well we've got a hairline crack on the leading edge on this you can see just there on the swage line it is also dented again on the wheel arch swage line as well uh, and then also it is bowed towards on the wheel arch section there again i think that is double skinned under there in fact yes it is i can feel it um, so again that might be tricky um, but yeah that's not really too much of a problem not as bad uh, as the bonnet that's for sure there is actually some damage on the a pillar as well really tiny little chip basically so i'm sure that can just be touched in in fact if i open the bonnet back up i can show you that basically where the bonnet has been pushed back and you can see it's just chipped the a pillar uh, just there so that's not too bad i can touch that in uh, and that won't show at all uh, however if i close this back down again perhaps i'll close it down properly you can see that the bonnet has been pushed up you can see the uh, panel gap here to the near side front wing is not great so that's been pushed up in fact you can pretty much get your finger in there and that's probably why it's hit 
uh, the A-pillar. The near side front wheel is also slightly damaged, uh, just some basic scratches on that, so that took a little bit of a brunt. In fact, look at that, the dust cover, take that off here. <laughs> it's got a big chunk out of it. That's mad, look at that, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, I presume whatever hit the car, um, hit it, well, fairly obviously like this, and obviously uh, hit the wheel as well. The car does run and drive as well, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, and well, to be honest, I haven't driven it, uh, so I don't know if it runs straight, but I presume there will be some sort of alignment that we need to do. However, with it being classed as a Cat N, um, theoretically, there shouldn't be any structural or suspension damage. Moving on down here, as the rain starts, we have some scratches on the headlights. Now that is a little bit concerning. In fact, with the car sat out here in the rain, it'll be interesting to see if this fogs up to see if there's any cracks um, in the headlight unit at all. Actually, there's one there, I can see. Uh, I think, is that a crack? That may well be. Um, so it might need a new headlight, I'm unsure yet. If I just kind of get that out of the way, you can see there are some other scratches. Uh, on it, but that is the main one just there. Um, the rad as well, it's gonna need a new rad. Uh, on the damage photos, which Rebecca showed me, basically at the crash site, there was some fluid on the ground just here. Uh, now I presume from giving it a bit of thought, that that's actually just coolant from this rad, because there is a reason for that. If I open the bonnet, bearing in mind this car has been sat at a salvage yard, has been moved around a little bit, presumably up to temperature uh, through various testing, the coolant level in the reservoir is okay. Meaning I don't think there is uh, a crazy uh, coolant leak. I think maybe just the impact on this rad, just the coolant within this system has been drained. Uh, because it's been damaged or so on and so forth. So I don't think there's a, a huge coolant leak right across the car. I think it is just uh, pinpointed to this region. You can see here, that's actually the remnants of the front bumper, just there. See a little bit of sapang blue. Uh, we are gonna need a new arch liner, fairly obviously. That's gone, you can see the brackets which hold that to the bumper. Uh, that is completely gone, uh, I presume under here as well. A definite part that needs to be thrown away you can see the rad has actually been pushed back. So that I presume should sit about here. So there may be some brackets behind here, which are bent and maybe need replacing. Um, but yeah, actually you can see down here that, yeah, it is a, a little bit loose. So yeah, it's gonna need a new rad, maybe some new coolant hoses and yeah, probably some stuff behind there, which I can't see right now. Boost pipes from the intercooler look okay. Jubilee clip is still pretty sturdy. Uh, so that theoretically is still holding boost, uh, which is good. And also the chassis legs are also completely unharmed, which is actually, I tell a lie, tiny little chip on there, but that is very lucky. Uh, in fact, is that even, yeah, that is, that's part of, the, part of the chassis leg, but that is good. That is completely unharmed. And of course on both sides as well. Now on first glance uh, with the photos, I did think that the crash bar, so this uh, black bar here at the front of the car, I did think that was bent and would need replacing, purely because you can see at the end, it does kind of taper in. I thought that was basically due to an impact. However, on this side, it is exactly the same, of course, with the hole for the toe eye there. But I guess that is the reason why this was categorized as a Cat N rather than a Cat S, because Cat S uh, is structural, and if the crash bar was bent, then that would be structural. Of course, that's all fine. As I said, chassis legs, at least on the first uh, glance, are fine as well. Up here, top of the headlight inside the uh, engine bay, the bolts for the headlight are all okay. So to be honest, the headlight only took a very slight uh, impact. But again, on here, the inner wing looks okay. I mean, if it was my guess, the impact would have been literally just here. So if it was back here, literally, I don't know, 30 centimeters, then that would have been a whole different story because then it would have been structural, you would have suspension damage, control arms would all be screwed, wheel would be screwed, uh, and probably things like the headlight, inner wing, and everything like that. This weather now is getting properly miserable, but we move, <laughs> we carry on. Um, so this, I'm not sure what this is here, whether it's just a scuttle panel connected to that, I believe so. Well, either way, it's split, so I'm gonna need another one of those. Uh, all the mounting points seem okay. Well, it should look like this, basically. So whatever that is, 
I need a new one of those. Um, intercooler, that's all fine. Uh, and also the rad at the front as well. That all seems fine, apart from the normal telltale kind of chips that you get just after normal uh, road use. And moving to the offside, we can see this wing, at least on first glance, now that it's covered in rain, looks completely okay. Now this in here is part of the bumper. Now I'm hoping that the mounting points within that, which I presume are attached to the wing, I'm hoping that they are unscathed. This wheel arch liner looks okay, apart from having, again, part of the bumper uh, attached to it. So that just should be a case of undoing that when the new bumper goes on. That should be okay, at least when the bumper is in place. That should all be um, intact, shall we say. That's the washer fluid reservoir, which seems okay. Can't really check and see if it's dry or wet, purely because it's now absolutely throwing it down the rain. That's the horn, which is all okay. And again, this side of the crash bar, of course, okay. Same with the chassis leg as well. One thing I have noticed is this, which I presume is the headlight washer mechanism. That is obviously present on this side. However, on the near side, it is missing. I don't know whether it should have something here. I presume so, because why only wash one headlight when you can wash both? So that's completely missing. Uh, and another thing as well, this is of course the wiring loom for the parking sensors. Again, bumper's not here, so that's uh, completely been ripped off. The connectors look okay, uh, but I have to test that when the new sensors go in. But basically, that is the damage. Not horrendous, and because I am a complete novice, I did want to play it fairly steady and kind of start with a project which, at least on face value, isn't too bad. But I think now is the perfect time to hop in uh, the car, head over to Rebecca, uh, collect some of this stuff. I can actually see what the bumper looks like uh, and actually, yeah, get all the paperwork and then the car will officially, on paper, be mine. I'll tell you what, the weather has just completely ruined all my plans. I'm hoping that you could at least get a good idea of the car, even though it started absolutely throwing it down. However, I'm now en route uh, to go meet up with Rebecca to, as I said earlier on in the video, collect the mangled front bumper <laughs> uh, and also the spare key and all the service history and all the documentation for the car, essentially. Uh, I'm actually in uh, one of the work vehicles. This is the new VW Amarok. Uh, proper cool bit of kit. V6 diesel, that's the Paramaricana uh, edition. But yeah, obviously because we're collecting what I presume to be quite a big bumper, I thought I'd take uh, the work pickup. But I'm just so excited to really get stuck into this project because, I mean, it's something so different for me. And even though it does seem to be uh, the, the go-to thing to do these days on YouTube, I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because I want to learn. I see all your guys' comments about why don't I do stuff myself or well, even when I do stuff myself, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I want to learn. I know a lot about cars, but I don't know a lot about the mechanics side uh, of cars and fixing them and modifying them myself, which is why I'm kind of taking on this challenge more so for myself. Uh, the fact I can share it is uh, a bit of a bonus, really. Uh, and that's kind of the ethos of my channel as a whole. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go get all this stuff, then head back to the car. Um, hopefully if it stops raining, I can show you it uh, again properly before then kind of sitting down and doing a, a bit of a tally of what I need to get to really get this rebuild well underway. Skipping ahead then, I am back with the car and we have one bumper here as well. We also have some of the other bits which um, kind of fell off in the crash. Um, this, I believe, is the uh, ducting that goes behind the bumper. The bumper in question, let's just carefully get this out the back. Um, but we'll put this over just by the car. I'll show you that in a moment, as well as all of these bits, which am I actually gonna be able to get in here and grab? There we go. But yeah, to be honest, a lot better than what I was expecting, um, damage-wise, on the bumper. So the car also does have uh, a nice Maxton splitter, which, to be honest, is all in one piece. But this is just, you know, grills and things, which I presume tabs are... Well, no, they're not. Tabs are not broken on that. That's interesting. Um, this, earlier on in the video, you may have heard me say about the headlight washer mechanism, which is present on the off side, but not on the near side. That is because it's in my hand. Here it is, completely knackered. Now that should go 
like that. But that's all been sheared off in the impact. Um, the bumper though, so it's hit and miss really. I could go down the route of plastic welding, which I may do before um, I look at replacing the whole bumper. Um, starting at the top though, this um, grill is oh, actually yeah behind there. That's pretty knackered, unfortunately. We've obviously got some scratches within the bumper itself. No cracks at the top half. Um, more scratches around here. However, right at the bottom, right on the bottom, we've got a crack, which I don't know if that would plastic weld because it's on pretty much right at the corner. Down here, look, not sure about that. Might need to get some advice, but I mean, yeah, look at all this under here though. Tabs are broken at the top, so it might just be easier to get a new one or a pre-owned one because the amount of tabs that are broken under here, I think it might be more trouble than it's worth. But to be honest, I thought it was gonna be in multiple pieces, the bumper, um, but it's not. It's actually not too bad, um, but I don't think it's savable. But let me know what you think, to be honest, uh, whether you think that this bumper is savable or whether it's a goner. One good thing though, is I do have the wiring uh, obviously still present here for the parking sensors. So they are all here. I don't know whether the sensors actually still work. I presume this one on the near side. No, oh, no, that looks intact actually. That all looks fine. All the clips on the back end are all fine. This connector then connects into the one which is dangling off the car. But yeah, that is really good news that I have that. But yeah, I think most of it is kaput, but I think that we can at least salvage some bits of it, such as the wiring loom for the uh, parking sensors and maybe even the splitter as well. Um, but yeah, the more I look at that end, the more I think it might be a bit of a goner, especially on this end as well. I don't know, I don't know. It's not good either way though. Now, even though most of these parts such as this are completely destroyed, there is one reason why I did want to uh, have them. Obviously, they're not worth uh, putting back on the car for fairly obvious reasons. Uh, not only am I able to kind of build a little bit of a puzzle, that clearly goes on there, but I'm also able to get the part numbers off the parts, which are um, obviously destroyed. Um, these were the only missing parts, as far as I know, apart from uh, the washer cover. Um, so I can get the part numbers off these, just so then I know which ones I do need to order new, because I mean, look at this. That is <laughs> definitely not being repaired and probably quite a cheap part. That is basically the ducting to bring air into the cooler at uh, the front of the rad, should I say. Definitely not being repaired that. Same with this, that is completely cracked. And probably the reason why that is chipped because that was sat just here. But yeah, I now have all the parts, even though they're all broken, um, to then know exactly what I need to do for the next steps. That though is going to wrap things up for what is I suppose episode one of this brand new series, rebuilding a subscriber's uh, Audi S1. A big thank you once again to Rebecca. Obviously very sorry that this happened to your car and glad that you're uh, unhurt and completely all right as well. Uh, but I'm gonna bring this car back uh, on the road to its former glory uh, as you once enjoyed it for yourself. Um, I will leave her Instagram link down in the description as well. I know she's obviously gonna be replacing this with another car, um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to really getting my teeth into this and seeing just how it goes really, because it's completely out of my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, oh, actually I've just noticed. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, I need to show you that. Look, there's that other headlight cracked as well. That is not good. You see that? Some hairline cracks around it. I suppose there is some scratches on there actually. That isn't good. The more I look at this, the more I'm finding. But yeah, I mean, what do you guys think of the new project? It's gonna be interesting to say the least, but let me know your thoughts down below and maybe what you advise me to do regarding the, uh, the bonnet and also the bumper as well. Before I do end up finding even more damage on the car, don't look at that. Uh, I am gonna wrap things up there though. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to getting into this. And I hope you're looking forward to seeing what happens with the series really. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Once again, a massive thank you for 100,000 subscribers. But if you have enjoyed this video, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.